Are we live right now? As soon as you see your face. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, Craft Beer Professionals Virtual Virtual Con. Um, we are here from Stout Tanks and Kettles. Uh, I'm Mike Palladino. I have a few years of brewing experience, uh, close to about 16, and I've been at Stout Tanks and Kettles uh, for about three and a half years, almost four now. Started in January of 2018 after uh, years of uh, brewing and opening up some breweries and now helping out brewers uh, find out whether they want to open a brewery, expand a brewery, or what kind of offerings that we have to help them here at Stout Tanks. Um, we're excited here. We're going to kind of focus a lot on putting the, uh, our uh, presentation today is about putting the pilot back into your brewery, or it may be for some of you um, uh, starting, you know, with the pilot. So uh, Don is a fellow brewer here working at Stout. So I'll let uh, Don, you can introduce yourself and kind of tell a little bit more about what we're going to do. Yeah, very similar to Mike's uh, situation. Uh, after about a decade of brewing, I uh, uh, made my way over to the equipment front. I've uh, been working with Stout ever since, uh, past three and a half years or so. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a, a great journey to be able to assist people as they're getting their systems together. And this is a great topic to be talking about, uh, you know, it gives us an opportunity to to talk about some of the equipment that we have, um, but even beyond that, just some of the uh, the ideas behind uh, pilot brewing, and uh, also just kind of take you th through some of the inception of our company was uh, starting at this level. Um, our former uh, former brewer and owner John uh, Watt he started off by doing smaller tanks that had professional features. So a lot of this. Um, has gone and grown into much larger and larger vessels and now we're capable of doing 30 barrel brew houses and uh, up to 200 barrel tanks but uh, when i look at the pilot i look a lot back at our origin story and um, you know the nice part is that it's it's taken some of that uh, that we've brought to the larger equipment and brought it back down to a nice package for everyone uh, with the hard piping and uh, some of the features to really dial in recipes. So uh, with that, I think maybe we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the uh, next slide. But um, yeah, the Pilot Pro uh, was uh, a big hit at CBC this year and uh, uh, plan on having it there uh, in Minneapolis as well, I think, uh, from the, the responses that we got from people. So yeah, I mean, some of the things that you know, we're great success and things that we're going to talk about. You can see some of the topics here um, is the, you know, ability for, you know, a lot of our brewers that, you know, have uh, larger breweries, you know, putting back some of the uh, smaller batches so that they can kind of look at being relevant around uh, doing some, you know, more flexible in the market, uh, smaller financial risks and being able to kind of scale, you know, the recipes. Uh, some of the um, you know, brewers look at the fact that it's, they don't have a pilot, so they don't have this opportunity. I think what we're going to do is hopefully give some of the brewers to some ammo to talk to their, uh, their management, the ownership, try to get them to get on board with why this is important to really have a pilot system in your brewery. Um, Don, I mean, I know you, you, you can probably testify about how busy you end up getting in a, you know, fast moving production brewery. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and making a point for uh, putting that time aside, you know, I, we had a one barrel uh, pilot system that we just didn't have the uh, ca the capability to really work with on a regular basis. Um, and that then forced us to really be in a position of doing test batching at a single batch size. So sometimes our one offs were 20 barrels. So um, you'd have to use a lot of knowledge in order to 
be able to do that and uh, and win the game more times than losing the game. Um, <laughs> we uh, uh, definitely, I think, towards the tail end of, of my time at the brewery, uh, started bringing some of that pilot back in, uh, getting more people in the brewery, especially as the brewery grows. You have more people from different backgrounds, and you want to make sure that you're utilizing all of the, um, uh, you know, the the creativity and the knowledge that they bring to your brewery uh, yep. in a way so that you can capitalize on, um, you know, perhaps the next big recipe. You never know. Yep, exactly. So um, let's move on to the uh, you know next little picture we have here for you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that I think a lot of brewers, on, especially larger breweries or fast moving breweries is, you know, sometimes there's a lack of, you know, creativity or there's a lack of maybe inspiration because they're just moving so fast. Um, having a small, you know, a smaller pilot brewery allows you to, you know, have some of these options. Um, you know, here we have one that uh, is, you know, depends on really what the right size pilot is for you as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be a one barrel brewery, um, you know, and, and that's something that, you know, I think a lot of brewers maybe, you know, need to, you know, look at, I mean, Don, you like you said, 20, you know, 20 barrel system. I was kind of primarily on about a 15 barrel system. So those were my test batches at the time, you yeah. know, um, uh, you want to go take it from here for that? Yeah. 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 I mean, when, when people think of the pilot, um, there's a lot of different ways people look at it. Some people say, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, planning on having a 15 barrel system. So I need a five barrel pilot because I'm just going to take my recipes and, and bring them up three times. Well, it's, you know, that is not necessarily a linear thing. Um, so, you know, when, when it comes to taking a look at the pilot, you don't necessarily need to have uh, a multiple of the size that you're working in. You just have to have the working knowledge and capability, but um uh, you know, each brewery is going to fit a different pilot setup. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the one barrel works nice and that's why we've, we've done it be, because it's approachable uh, and it's, it's an easy, small footprint. And uh, when you're doing the math and you're, and, and whatnot, it's pretty easy uh, to, to take things and scale them up as needed. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing is the financial concern uh, when you're looking at it, small batches, that inspire the new products, those are going to uh, sometimes require ingredients that are costly. Um, you know, taking a chance on something mm -hmm. and not breaking the bank is always a good thing. Uh, yeah. You know, having that that properly sized pilot system doesn't necessarily mean, uh, like I said, that it's multiples. Perhaps that pilot system is, is located elsewhere. You know, more and more people have satellite facilities that are mostly fed by uh an existing pub or an existing brewery and they just have a system that they want to be able to have fun on and yeah. i think Inspire. that's the important part is is mm -hmm. keeping it fun i mean um uh, one of the best things that that you experience as a brewer is the excitement of doing something new uh versus having to brew the same beer over and over again <laughs> yeah. so uh, i think uh keeping it fun is is probably one of the the most key aspects of it um but also uh having a little bit of organization you know led from the top down and uh uh but bolstering the creativity of your staff yeah no that's that's exactly right the creativity the, the inspiration you know creating new products is what really uh the brewers want to do and i think the uh the craft beer drinkers are looking for that. So you have to create new, new products. You have to be able to do things, having your team inspired to do that, I think is one of the best, you know, byproducts of having a pilot brewery. It, it's yeah. almost like something that it's just a result of having that. So very, very good for the brewery staff, very good for the morale of, of everybody at the brewery itself. Yeah. And when you're not actively brewing, you can work on the, uh, the painting behind the, the, uh, exactly there you go <laughs> um all right uh flexibility you know that's that's definitely something that we we see with the smaller systems you know test batches you know there there is more ability to experiment there's more ability to create some things that you wouldn't do on a larger scale um and you're able to you know honestly adapt a little bit you know more so so 
Um, you know, I think larger breweries tend to, you know, have sometimes the, uh, of course, the um, the advantage financially of scale. You know, they're they're doing similar things that take, you know, same amount of time but larger volumes. Uh, so having flexibility, and even if it's, you know, something where you're looking at, you know, coming off and saying, what are we going to do for the next next year ahead? You know, that flexibility. Um, our Pilot Pro is designed so that it's mobile as you can see there uh it has some wheels caster so you can kind of shift it around the brewery if you you know can put quick disconnects or, or move things on your 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 supply lines it, it becomes something that is is easy and, and you're able to do it uh having a square frame is really nice because larger breweries can stick their forklifts under there lift it up maybe stick it on top of their walk-in cooler or get it out of the way on you know pallet racking or anything uh when the time is right they can pull it out um don you want to kind of hit on some of those other points or anything I missed there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, uh, for us, uh, the, the, one of the nice things is this is the smallest uh, area with which we offer uh, the front manway door on the mash ton, which is a nice. We have a couple upgrades for uh, uh, wedge wire false bottom that we can do on there. Um, in addition, you have the Herms coil in there so that step mashing is possible. So uh, you're not going to necessarily mimic steam perfectly, but if you do want to work on something like this, you can uh, simulate some of the steps that you could have in a steam system. Uh, also, some of the advanced controls in there are going to link into flow meter, usage of water. Um, and once again, the hard piping is just pre-established pathways. Um, that being said, there are areas for uh, tri-clamps where you could uh, go in and actually modify if you desire to. So. Uh, it's nice for cleaning. If you ever wanted to tear the whole thing apart, uh, you're capable of getting in there with a scrub brush to, to hit all the different parts. But uh, definitely a nice unit. I think, uh, you know, our offering for the pilot, um, you know, started a couple years ago and we've seen uh, some good activity on it. I think as uh, more and more breweries come out and the competition increases, uh, I believe that there's going to be a need for more pilot in the brewery. Um, because, you know, obviously customers' palates are going to keep changing. Uh, you're going to see it. You're going to find that some of the recipes that are out there are going to be dated. You know, at, at one point it was the heavily bitter West Coast IPA, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden it became the fruity East Coast IPA, you know. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of things changing over the course of time. And having that equipment there is going to help you uh, capitalize on it. So. Sure, exactly. Um, you know, one of the things I think you you did hit on was, you know, laughing at the uh, the fact that there's, you know, I, I see some of our competitors, they have very long, mile long, curvy, you know, one piece stainless pipes. Uh, you know, those are honestly, in my experience, horrible to uh, as a brewer usage when you're kind of looking at uh, being able to visually check or just wanting to change something, you know, because when I started brewing in 2002 professionally and, you know, really what's going on now is, is it's varies. So the same way as our consumer palate varies, you know, the, the brewer has to be adaptable and they have to be able to, you know, change and, and adapt on that and, and offer those things. So the only way you're going to do that is with experimentation, you know, and stuff like that, creating, trying new things. So having some hard piping that has more break points and more tri-clamp connections so that you can actually pull a T redirect try your own thing and then there is a lot of flexibility in our designs because we know as as brewers that there's always going to be some innovation coming you know that we haven't even thought about yet you know whether that's you know five months from now or you know 15 years from now that, that the adaptability the flexibility of our designs allows brewers i think to to really um you know take advantage of that um you know putting in you know new special beers flexibility of with your um your lineup itself is something as well you know having the ability to to do that you can't do that if you're if you're looking at maybe only large-scale brewing all the time how do you throw some of those one-offs in there the flexibility of having a pilot also gives you the opportunity to look at how you test your even your standard beers can you take some of your standard beers and kind of just tweak them a little bit can you make those a little bit more where you offer more than one style with one brew you know, and so those are some of the things I think with flexibility of having a pilot that some are 
overlooked on. You know, a lot of times it comes down to, you know, can we fit this in our budget? The, the budget usually has to have some type of, you know, product development, quality control, testing, and, and other things that come into market. Flexibility with a, with a pilot system allows you to kind of go do those things on a, on a scale that's not going to, you know, break the bank. Um, let me see about the uh, next next one we have here. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, consistency again. I think that's something that with a uh, test pilot uh, system, that's you know how you can get you know your your team up to have better brewing knowledge. Uh, the staff itself is going to be a stronger staff when you have a pilot system. Uh, the, the beer, the consistency of your product, of course, is going to most likely be a better consistent product. Um, some of the, you know, downsides, of, you know, that I had in my career was not having a pilot system. So there was at some points less creativity. You know, I think there that's where you want to, you know, kind of look at that and you have a pilot, you have options regarding those things. Um, Don, I know you're the, you know, the school of brewing that you came from it, it was you know all about consistency all about you know keeping those numbers all about testing and, and really kind of improving your product and improving the knowledge of the staff around you so that there was another there is a as a point so that you can move on as a maybe an assistant brewer up to a brewer a, a brewer up to a director of op brewing operations some of those things and you can't do that without consistency um right right yeah and you know seeing the um uh, some of the pictures next uh, over there, you know, obviously uh, uh, when we're talking about professional design that once again, it, we, we started with uh, some smaller vessels because our, our brewer owner um, found that a lot of the equipment out there did not have the professional features that he wanted. So uh, bringing those in at a smaller level um, and, and never getting complacent, you know, even now, some of the things that we learn on our larger systems, we, we translate to our smaller systems as well. Um, you know, we've started to improve our offerings. Uh, you know, some of the things that perhaps maybe we started off with now we, you know, for instance, uh, the, our three barrel mash tun, we, we still have a uh, kind of a budget entry level perforated bottom, but now we also have a kind of an upgraded, uh, you know, milled or wedge wire false bottom that we offer um, we've also taken some of those vessels and increased the height for easier grain out. Um, but you know, in the end, um, a lot of people got started with some of the, uh, equipment that we, uh, brought onto the market and we still have those as an offering for those who are budget sensitive. Um, but we are, uh, uh, continuously taking innovations from the larger systems and bringing them to the smaller systems. So, um, so yeah, professional design using the right tools, you know, for, for any particular brewer, that could be uh, software. Uh, you know, there's numerous software programs out there uh, to help you scale your pro scale your recipes up. Um, for some brewers, it's going to be just uh, utilizing the the good old fashioned math. Uh, the um, you know building a spreadsheet utilizing uh, math equations from uh, brewing texts. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of education out there now that wasn't there before. I mean, uh, I was fortunate to be part of the American Brewers Guild, do some work at Siebel. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, you know, the, today there's a lot more opportunities, even on the, the local front, for uh, community colleges that are offering brewing, now, brewing uh, programs, uh, fermentation programs. And uh, I think for anyone who wants to be successful, uh, taking a step towards that is probably going to be key. Um, teaching consistency. This is uh, part of any brewer as they start to go along on their brewer's journey. You know, as you get later in your career, you find that you are mentoring. Um, you are having to, to take that next generation and kind of show them how not only you were taught, but the things that you learned that improved how you were taught. Um, mm -hmm. And the only way that's going to happen is is by taking the time and i i've seen it firsthand as you know you start with like only a handful of people and everybody's so busy that they're just doing whatever they can to keep up but uh as the business grows you start to get uh, more hands on deck you start to feel uh, a little bit of a release of some of the pressure on what you're doing 
And then you can carve out the time for something like uh, a pilot program where perhaps you can actually take some time and get everybody scheduled to be off and, and have their, their, uh, their input heard and, and have the opportunity to learn, you know, uh, even if it's just taking one senior uh, brewer and uh, having them work once a month with uh, an alternating person from, from your brewery. I mean, it could be anyone. It could be the person who's washing kegs, who just happens to be a great home brewer, or it could be somebody on the canning line, but you just never know where that uh, opportunity is really going to pay off. And uh, some of those people may have something to, to contribute that you just don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can, and it's not just the brewing staff, I think, as well. I mean, improve your whole, the, the pre people who are making the product, uh, making the beers, uh, you know, and whatnot. But there's also things where you can kind of pull in your your hostess, your busboy, any, any of the people who are working in the brewery. Uh, some of those people can, you know, have a little bit more knowledge if you have the time to, you know, pull them in where they're not in the way of your larger, you know, scaling, you know, full scale system, uh, improving their knowledge along along there. It, it proves the consistency of your product overall and the brand image that kind of comes with it. That's part of it. It's the not the product itself, but the image that you're also kind of portraying. Is your staff knowledgeable? You know, do, do they when they come in, is it is it consistent from staff to staff how they can actually help guide somebody maybe through the lineup on your beer menu? Uh, some of those things kind of come down to, you know, the consistent product of the beer or the consistent product of the knowledge of the staff as well. Uh, there. And you never know when you're going to need to fill a tap line. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can have tons of tap lines and always find yourself having one that's empty that you want to fill with something. Um, you know, making it fun for people. Um, uh, example, I was fortunate enough when my, my son was born. Uh, they said, well, just write a recipe and we'll brew it. And I was like, okay. So, um, you know, special occasions for your employees where maybe you can utilize that. Uh, I think it, it also, in this day and age of attrition, uh, is important to, to, you know, it's an easy way to let them know that they're appreciated yep. and that their, their information is valuable. And I think it's going to be uh, uh, something you probably see a lot of the better breweries doing is... Um, making their employees know that they're appreciated. So. Sure. I, I think sometimes you get somebody who even the question, you know, I, I was the why the person, the whole kid who asked the reason why. Uh, so when, when you have that person on your staff who asks why we do something, you know, that this is where you can kind of go back and maybe take some time, show them this is why we do this. That's why we are consistent, you know, in our product. And so some of, some of those things are a lot easier to kind of like break down show on a smaller scale so that it does make sense when it gets up to maybe a little bit more, maybe a, a more automated, larger system or whatnot as well. So, um, yeah, I think the consistency, we've kind of hit that one. So let's uh, move on to the next one here and see if I can get my cursor to move. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, there's also, uh, we kind of brushed on some of these things as well earlier, the, the financial risk is usually less involved uh, when you have these smaller batches. You know, you you see that first one, experiment, experiment, experiment. You know, those who, you know, take risk, those who, you know, uh, who are willing to kind of put a little bit of money into their pro pilot program, those are the ones who are coming out with exciting new beers. You know, the, the ones that are coming out with exciting new beers all the time, you know, they have to have a pilot system. There's, it, it, there's no, no doubt about it. Um, I think those are, I believe that's right, that those are uh, Ken Grossman's two barrel tanks over there from Sierra Nevada. Even even somebody like Ken over at Sierra, he still sees the need to you know keep investing into his pilot program, looking at you know new ways or new techniques or or having different sizes so that he can test these maybe in different sizes. Um, you know you don't want to be the the brewer who says oh it's too costly to put a pilot program, and then your your brand kind of starts to get a little bit stale. Uh, you know, what's selling right now? What is, what are the things that, you know, are moving? It's the new, new one-offs all the time, constantly rotating those in and out. Um, you can't do, you know, it, it, you can, but there is more financial risk if you are uh, running without a pilot and you're running on maybe a 10, 20 or large, you know, larger even system, even sevens and stuff like that. There could be more financial risk in, involved in that if you're not, 
uh, you know, maybe skilled right, or you're not sure what that, that outcome of that new ingredient that you're trying to use, you know, how much lychee or whatever do we need to use, how much cinnamon sticks or, or how much of this, you know, that you can do this, the opportunities are going to be there for you uh, in regards to that. And, um, you know, I think uh, one of the parts hopefully we can give our, our brewing, you know, our, our fellow, you know, brewers out here is, you know, take some of these notes, take some of this, this information and go to your management, go to some of your ownership if there is pushback about that. And you say, hey, why are we losing some market share right now? Well, I don't know, because we haven't put out any new stuff. You know, why are we losing, you know, the market over here? You know, maybe those new breweries are just putting out all the time new new products. How you have to be able to kind of keep up. If it's something that you, you know, can fit into your budget, you know, pilot breweries are surprisingly, if you've already, especially you've already got your brewery up and running, most of the time you have a lot of the core things that we can pillage off of and maybe just have a, you know, maybe we can pull your, your, you don't have to get a new glycol system. You're pulling off that glycol system. You don't need a, maybe a new grinder, you know, or whatnot. Uh, you know, we don't want to use mill. It's a dangerous word in this, in this industry, but uh, use your malt cracker, your malt grinder, you know, from your larger system if you can, um, you know, and those things. And, you know, Don, I know you, you guys had like a, a robust uh, QA program and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's all about innovation, you know, and I know, the you know it, it becomes a, a conversation with finances yeah yeah and i i would say you know the, one of the other things is uh in the day of age of collaborations uh there are millions of different organizations that as a brewer you probably get involved with because uh you know part of being a craft brewer is being part of the community and uh you know m perhaps maybe having that smaller system that you can take a chance on a recipe with um you know some strange ingredients i mean i've god used some really weird things in beer but um you know i think that was part of the fun you never knew but um when if you have the uh, the smaller system you can definitely uh, uh avoid uh breaking the bank with it and you can also um easily get a quick photo op with a bunch of people from an organization with either the large system or the smaller system behind them it's still in some ways, people actually kind of think that the smaller system's cuter and they're like, please take my picture in front of this, you know? So um, it's just kind of fun. Um, I think that uh, once again, though, there, you never know who you're going to be working with. I mean, we've we've done uh, oyster stouts with uh, Pacific Seafood and, uh, uh, you know, all sorts of different uh, things that, that perhaps you bring in uh, ingredients uh, when the fruit craze was going on. I, I learned about fruits that I don't think I even knew existed. Uh, and that was kind of part of the fun, you know, you get these new flavors and, and I guess, you know, in addition to that, you're, you're able to, to get these initial batches out. Um, and then perhaps, you know, you don't necessarily have to release them to the public. You can, you can have yourself a good uh, valued panel of people that you trust their palates. You know um, it's very important to have a good taste panel available for your brewery and that that goes beyond even this pilots discussion i think it's important to see how your product holds up uh over the course of time and uh to really have those people at, at your uh, 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 the capability of utilizing those people because uh mm -hmm. one of the things is if you think your product is doing one thing and it's doing something else that could be uh, a whole wake up call to uh to what's happening here so yep. um but anyway i digress we, we're going to get back to uh pilot pilot talk um, <laughs> we'll get down to the next one there i know it's tough we, we we're, we're passionate we kind of get going on uh on the whole the whole big picture there but um uh scaling you know new recipes quickly this is something that can you know uh how do you want to be you want to be out you want to get to the market as fast as you can you know you you want to get your your testing you want to see what it's like. You don't want to, you know, argue with your your management or your brewing staff about like how much is it going to cost for this test of 30 barrels or 60 barrels or 15 barrels or whatever you're looking at. You know, so you can you can do a few of these small scale on the pilot. Which one works right? You know, we did one with the higher gravity, one with the lower gravity, uh, one you know with this yeast, one with that yeast. You know, all the all the different types of things that you may have ideas of your staff. Uh, you know, test, 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 experiment, 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 you know, get those things, get those one-offs. The one-offs are what sells most right now. 
I mean, when I walk into a brewery, I'm usually asking, hey, what do you have right now on, you know, on what's your seasonals? You know, those are the things that people want to, you know, craft beer drinkers, you know, aficionados are, you know, are excited about. So I think, you know, the, the test pilot system allows you to have some of these opportunities. Um, you know, say you, you can get your proven results. If they work really well, then you can scale them up and do them on your larger batches and say, yep, this was worth those tests. This, this was worth throwing in an absorbent amount of cinnamon and, and, and then way, way, way back and then finding out which one was the right amount of cinnamon or whatever that, that ingredient that you're using or that new, new product that you're trying to put out on the market. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's about relevancy. I think Don sees that as, as being as, as, as much as anybody. Uh, you guys had so many products that you were constantly putting out. I was always so impressed. Uh, you know, there's, there's breweries that are really good about doing that. And I always, when I look back and I talk to those breweries, I talk to those brewmasters or I talk to some of the people on the staff, you know, they're excited. They say, oh yeah, we have, we have days where we bring the whole staff in and we start brainstorming and then we put it together and then, you know, we, we do some testing or, you know, like you said, maybe it's a special occasion, a, a wedding, a, you know, an anniversary, a, a childbirth or something like that. You can bring the staff in, you can play around. And those, those are where those really, those, those brainstorming ideas happen. If it works right, if all of a sudden, the, you know, all the, all the, the, everything aligns and you're like, this is, this is phenomenal. Then you can take that and you can scale that up. You can get that to the market faster. And sometimes those are some of those hidden jewels that happen, even just on a, uh, a day where maybe it wasn't even supposed to be about like brewing something new. Somebody just happened to be in the group that asked the question, you know, somebody, you know, oh, I don't know about the brewing process. What if you added this? So some of those, you know, wonky ideas that somebody has that triggers like, you know, a brewer is like, huh, yeah, what if we did that? You know, th those things can be, can happen quickly when you have pilot systems. Yeah. And I've seen it, it thrive with a pilot system. When you have a pilot system going, um, you're capable, once again, of, of getting those recipes um, perfected quicker. You know, um, like I, I said at the beginning of my career, um, our, our uh, uh, one-offs were full batch size. And when you have full batch size, then you got to wait for it to be consumed before you brew another one. <laughs> and sometimes that's just going to add to the timeline a lot. So um, having the smaller batch sizes allows for you to get those moving a lot quicker. And then just having enough uh, small fermenters uh, is, is important as well, just to kind of, uh, you know, have them keep going. You have you know, somebody might be doing a lager and one, it might tie it up for five weeks. You know, you don't want to stop innovation because you only have one uh, single uh, fermenter to, to do your experiments on. So, um, you know, I, I suggest at least a couple, bare minimum. Uh, definitely having two is better than one. And that aspect uh, allow you to keep things moving along. But uh, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the, the part that I think is, you know, what, what's really relevant, you know, today it is, it's, you know, when you walk into a place, it's like finding something new on the menu. You know, if you if you've been in there, it was, you know, two months ago and it's the same stuff. You tend to be like, OK, well, I'm not uh, maybe go to somewhere else. So you, you want to keep those people really coming back, you know, whether it's inside your tap room or whether it's something that they're pulling off the shelf. If you're a package more, you know, heavy brewery. And and that, again, it, it, it's hard to do that, you know, without some type of pilot program where you can have the uh, ability to take some of these things, get them to the market as fast as you can. If it's a new idea, you want to be the first one. You don't want to be the person who was like the, you know, the last in line, because then it looks like you're just kind of riding a, uh, a, a wave that somebody else has already done, you know? And so I think, I think there's, you know, a lot, you know, that we've, you know, kind of, you know, spoke on, but again, it's like getting your product to the market quick. If it's something that you have an idea on, if it's unique, you really do want to be on the front end of that wave. Um, yeah. And at the, at the bare minimum, I, I think even if you, if budget wise, uh, a pilot is prohibitive to you right now. Um, I feel like it, an important factor would be at least having a small fermentation vessel that you could divert work to um, from existing recipes and perhaps improve those recipes. So, um, don't think that it has to be a huge, you know, cash out to, to, 
get some sort of a program going, sometimes it's incremental. You know, you mm-hmm. don't you don't come in for the buffet. You, you, you kind of pick at what you can. And uh, if it's just getting a small fermenting vessel of any type, you know, something sanitary, if you can tie it into glycol, great. If you can't, make sure you have some sort of temperature control uh, and and just go from there. You know, that's it, I think ha- a lot of it is the will to have a pilot system uh, and, you know, eventually the, the money comes uh, to afford one if you if you don't necessarily have it, you know. Sure. Uh, you just have to run those numbers. You have to get that return on investment. And and most people are going to see that it's a well-worthy cause. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, recapping, you know, uh, again, the you know, the market is changing. How, how are people going to be really adapting to the market? You know, we, we really want, uh, you know, as brewers, we want to be competitive with our fellow brewers. We want to be our brands to be ones that are recognizable. Um, I think we want to stay relevant, you know, all these, these kind of marketing, uh, points here for your, you know, your brand to be noticed, um, <clears throat> for your staff, you know, to be the, the, you know, part of the staff to have some exciting, you know, inspiration, uh, and creativity, uh, behind what they want to do. Uh, you know, if we look at the way the job market is right now, I think keeping your staff inspired is very relevant. Uh, besides having, you know, uh, in new beers, having your, your staff there, having consistent staff, having like the ability to really, you know, your staff to know what's going on. They see the market changing. They can inform you on what's really going on. They can tell you what they see out when they went out to a bar and they said, man, this beer was amazing. How do we get this and put something similar, but put our own spin on it in our, in our brewery? Well, you know, if, if you're on a large brewery, you know, that's going to have to probably be something where you put on your pilot to see if it works for you um, yeah. in there. I don't think I could have said any better than you, Mike. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think what we might want to do is uh, move along if anyone has any questions. And, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any, any, anyone out here that has some questions for you know, comment side here. Uh, you know, the other part is uh, Don and I are very... Uh, available here at stout or you know the two of us kind of work um you know mainly on things for the uh systems themselves uh is what we're kind of uh the two of us kind of mainly focus on systems you have you know larger systems uh pilot systems if you tend to be like expanding your cellar or whatnot uh, we help you there as well we have a pretty large uh uh, brewery staff knowledge. Uh, everyone here has really had professional brewing experience. So there's not uh, anyone on the phone who really can't, when they answer, that couldn't help you out. Um, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, brewers will kind of come in and I think, uh, I don't see any questions coming right now. I think Don may have dropped off accidentally, but uh, a lot of our brewers tend to um, look again, at, at looking back and saying, what, why do, why do I need a pilot brewery? And and it really comes back to say, why don't you need a pilot brewery? So when I ask him, I said, I mean, you really have to have something. We see the selection on the shelves. It's constantly changing the selection on the shelf. So what do we want to do? We want to be relevant. We want to have our brand out there. Uh, The equipment, you know, that you want, you want something that's reliable. You want it to be uh, sturdy and, and, and really test, you know, stand the test of time. If there's something where you're, uh, you know, uh, I'm back in the <laughs> um, uh, when there's something that you're um, looking at saying, how do we make this really happen? Then you're, you're not going to be able to do that without your pilot system. Hey, Don's back. Uh, Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> I was trying to look at the, uh, if there were any questions offhand and I, I'm going to leave that to Mike. That way I don't accidentally log myself up. Um, yeah, no, I didn't see any questions, but I think, you know, just kind of recapping a little bit on, you know, really why people want it. And I, you know, I, I kind of said, why, you know, why don't you want a brewery is more, is a better question. You know, you, you want to be relevant. You want to have your staff excited. Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, why don't you kind of, you know, hit maybe on some of those other reasons we may have like either gone over, like, you know, another one that, uh, is, uh, you know, maybe something we haven't covered. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all about consistency. Um, you know, that that goes beyond pilot. That's, uh, you know, when, when I was in the Brewers Guild, one of the, the, the lines that made me, uh, uh, I remember the most is no matter what you do, do it consistently because 
uh, you're going to have a beer that someone's going to like and someone's not. But if it's all over the place, uh, then it's uh, and it's unpredictable. No one's going to drink it, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah. having that consistency, having the right tools that you need, having the right inspiration from your veteran brewers is important. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, you know, the cost. The cost sure. is, um, you know, the equipment initially, uh, but also, you know, utilizing strange and, and interesting ingredients. You know, sometimes they're going to be a hit. Yep. Sometimes they might not, but you know, you just have to kind of roll with it. And, uh, and you know, on that, do do. on that, there is one question that popped up here. It, it says, um, what size pilot system do you offer is one size better than another? You want to hit that Don? Sure. Sure. I would say, you know, uh, for the, for the sake of what we've been showing, we've been talking about our pilot pro, which is a one barrel system and uh, one barrel is nice. It's very capable of being, scaled up you know the math is easy utilizing that um but at the same time it's it's kind of what i tell people there's no one way to to do a brewery you know like um that size pilot may not be adequate for your brewery um and and just because a system is of a particular size doesn't necessarily make it a pilot i mean i've i've been at uh, you know uh ac golden over out at coors and their pilot system is a 15 barrel system, you know, so um, as you saw in the picture earlier, there was a five barrel pilot system for for one of our breweries. Um, and, you know, so in, even right now, I'm quoting people on, you know, some people that have 100 barrel systems that want a 10 barrel pilot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's just uh, it's particular to your brewery and your needs and. Um, when you're determining your pilot, it's almost as, as important as determining the system that you're brewing on initially. It's all based off of wise decision making and proper planning. You know, yep. so, um, you know, I, I always tell people to look at their business plan when we figure out what system you're looking at. Your pilot should be a part of your business plan, um, mm -hmm. especially if, if you're uh, if you're looking to to have good growth uh, along the way. And for those people that it's an, it's something coming in after the fact, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that it's a, a negative. It just means that uh, in, once again, you have to take your, your data and go back to the beginning and say, okay, what, what am I going to get out of this system? You know, because if you're never going to use it, then don't buy it. <laughs> if, yeah, if, it's gonna, if it's going to get actively used, then yeah, be, be happy to make the investment. Yeah. I think there's, you know, there's probably, you know, a few more questions out there. I see another one, um, you know, saying a lot of it, different price points. Uh, the quality does matter. You know, I mean, I think uh, our systems, uh, I can speak for ours, there's no NPT threaded fittings. You know, they're touching product. They're all, you know, stainless TC fittings, um, you know, with, uh, you know, good good quality welds and whatnot. So the, the quality does matter, especially if it's, it's about your brand. It's hard to sacrifice those things. Um, you know, Don and I are, and, and the rest of the, the staff here at Stout are, you know, say readily available. Uh, you can, you know, hit us up on our uh, phone calls. We love phone calls. Uh, we got some video links and whatnot that you can set up some video meetings. Uh, you know, or if you want to just do some emails, uh, shoot an email to us. Uh, you can go to our, our website and request, um, you know, a pilot system quote or a full system quote, or if you're just looking for tanks or small parts, uh, you can kind of hit us up on our website. Um, I don't know if we uh, have too much more. There's about, I think, 45 seconds left or so in our presentation here. Um, but, uh, you know, again, it's uh, been a pleasure to uh, talk to everybody here who's been listening. I know that uh, there's a lot of uh, craft beer and craft beverage really moving. Uh, we're excited to be a part of the craft beer professionals uh, group and uh, the people who have joined us here today. We want to thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's been a true pleasure to talk to all of you. Uh, I, I want to just thank uh, CBP for having us. Um, and, you know, keep the passion in what you're doing. Um, keep the excitement. Um, think about bringing that pilot into your system. And uh, I hope that uh, if you do, you, you're hap happy to give me a call. I'm happy to talk to you. So. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Cheers.